one of our liaisons uh, is here tonight. He's not yet in the room. Uh, and we do have Don McCreno, former principal of Waterford High School. It's good to see you, Don. Welcome. Okay, is there any public comment? Seeing none, we can move to the consent agenda. Could I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Jody? I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as Is there any discussion? Any additions or corrections? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 No one seconded? I thought I heard that. I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It is approved unanimously. Do we have any correspondence? No correspondence. Okay. Superintendent's report. Sure. Pleased to uh, have a number of uh, exciting, I think, topics tonight. First and foremost, up front is Clark Lane Middle School doing a presentation tonight, focusing on some of our uh, special ed and intervention programming at the middle school. I know Mr. Sachs and the team are here tonight to present. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, I'm going to introduce Mr. Sachs at this time to introduce uh, his team members with him. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we're presenting tonight with Sue Morgan, who is our Special Education Curriculum Leader and Wilson Reading Program Instructor and Trainer. And Kayla Sullivan, who is a Special Education Instructor, and she's also one of the two teachers in charge of our Support Center and Explorers Program, both of which we will be through this presentation. So thanks for having us. Um, you know, one of our charges as public school, public middle school, is to do our very best to engage and provide instruction for students with a variety of very challenging learning needs. And um, we really try each day to create an atmosphere where these students are challenged, feel very comfortable, feel very accepted by their peers. And um, we have excellent training, great support from Kathy Bowles, Mr. Chiard, and Mr. Powers. Um, and we feel that the students um, have a variety of choices, a variety of support, and it almost seems like yearly there's a lot of research that helps us for the new program. So um, special education supports at Clark Lane are a, a lot different than when I was teaching in the mid to late 90s. We really had two models back then. It was a resource room and a co-op teacher. Resource room was when the students who special needs went to a room, could have on that. They could have any number of disabilities, and they put them in a very large classroom and do the best to get them through the day, get them through their struggles. Now we have a lot more specific um, types of intervention, and we still have a few things left over for those which is co-op teaching the school So the first thing I'd like to do is present to you. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the overall um, philosophy that got here. Thank you. Um, so I wish you had commented a few minutes ago that this special education is um, has kind of a new face to it. Um, with um, 21st century learning skills um, so important for our students and um, the right for all students to be able to learn to their fullest potential. Um, we have moved um, to a skill-based um, curriculum and intervention approach at the um, We have um, worked um, very uh, hard and diligently to create literacy programs um, for life skills, real-world work, math programs for life, and also skill-based learning strategies um, for life. And those, um, those uh, strategies include um, things like organization, um, executive functioning type skills, um, self-advocacy, and so forth. Um, go ahead. So we're working really hard to um, ensure that every student's strengths are focused on in order for them to um, work on improving um, their learning um, differences. And um, that is at an academic level as well as a social level and an emotional level. And on top of all this, is sort of a shift toward um, encouraging students to become more embedded cognitive about their disabilities. So one um, 
interesting aspect of a PPT meeting that we are doing, which is a meeting for our students with special needs, is Gene especially, has the students create a PowerPoint, which explains to all those present their learning challenges, their learning strengths, what they would like to see the teachers in the school focus on to help them out. And so instead of in the past where we sort of move students through and try to get them to understand and learn as much content as possible, now we're also including the, the whole concept of them understanding themselves as learners, understanding the strategies they need to come up against any challenge, and to move forward with confidence. And that was probably a piece that was missing about a decade ago. Hmm. So um, we mentioned earlier that most of um, most of our uh, intervention programs are now, are now still based, but we also, um, and that's the center column here, but this is an overall view of what our special education programs look like at Clark Lane. I'm going to um, have Caitlin talk about um, the area in the, um, the blue, uh, which is our support center, as well as our uh, so our Explorers program is for our students with multiple disabilities, intellectual disabilities, and autism. Um, the students within that program have a highly individualized program based on what they need, so they may be um, out in the class, out in general education classes for some portion of the day, and then in a smaller setting uh, receiving reading and math instruction. Our students in the support center are mainly our students with significant emotional needs. They all um, have a very constricted program where their behavior is monitored. We send home both weekly and monthly reports to parents. Students are coming in there for the majority of the day to start, and then as the year progresses, we tend to move them out and get them out into more mainstream classes with their peers. Um, something that's been really nice about these programs this year is myself and have really worked together and put the programs together. So our students in the support center have ended up serving as role models for our work students. It's been very nice and beneficial for them as well. So just two things about that that's pretty interesting to see on a daily basis is one student with um, a very difficult emotional profile who struggles throughout the day to make the same comment. When you hear them sometimes with someone who is more disabled, they last the occasion, they calm right down and they become a peer leader and a peer teacher, and then in, in turn calms them down for the day, and it's a really nice partnership and collaboration. But I wanted to just take a second in the support center section to mention that Kathy comes over monthly, and the real value in Kathy coming over and meeting with us to talk about support center students, which, as you recall, Caitlin said that they start off being in there most of the time, is that Kathy pushes us to say, okay, this is the time now to start releasing the students for mainstream. And that would mean going out for one class and then a few months later going out for another class. With that little piece, that little, um, you know, having her come in from a different perspective and sort of jar us and remind us about certain statutory obligations and other things really pushes us to think, oh yeah, maybe this student is ready to come out starting in a month and then start taking the early class outside of the course of So it's a really nice partnership that she pushes us away from. Okay, the skills classes are um, designed for students with specific learning disabilities. Um, they're focused in the areas of reading, math, um, organization, and executive function and skills. Um, the, um, the classes are, the students are placed in those classes um, after um, we look at their, um, their profile, their learning profile, um, their history. We gather a lot of um, data to um, examine to determine um, which particular um, class and um, strategies approach will, will work best for the students in um, areas of research. We have um, reading classes. We have um, the focus um, on reading intervention, and, and I will go into those in a little bit more detail. Um, we have language arts classes, language arts skills classes that focus on um, combining the instruction for students who need um, specific intervention with reading comprehension and written expression, um, where they examine uh, a lot of uh, writing and text. Um, we have a uh, math skills class that focuses on, focuses on intervention um, for students who have specific math disabilities and are struggling with, um, with those 
um, problem solving skills. Um, then we also have what we call a, um, our co-op math class. Um, the co-op program is um, an approach to learning is a uh, collaboration between regular education and special education. It's a regular education math class where um, there is a general education teacher and a special education teacher, and they collaboratively teach that class to all students. Um, that way there is two teachers in the classroom, there is two sets of, uh, of um, skills from the teachers, and um, they're able to meet the, the students' needs in the special education, from a special education standpoint, in the regular education setting. It really um, is a great approach to inclusion, um, as well as meeting the needs um, academic and socially. Um, a newer component of our skills class is what we call our academic study hall. This is, um, we started that this year, um, and this class we found to be really beneficial for those who, who don't specifically have a reading um, deficit, don't have a math deficit, um, but have those executive functioning difficulties where they have trouble organizing their um, getting their homework done, advocating for themselves, getting started, um, and just kind of need that, that little extra um, structure to help them um, be successful in their, in their day. Um, so, um, this, this is sort of a stopping on yeah. point for being totally fascinating or being um, basically able to take electives. So, as the board members recall, earlier this year, maybe at the end of last year, we talked about our elective program. Well, that is really significantly reduce the number of large study halls. We really don't have large study halls anymore. We have specialized study halls and lots of electives. So the goal is always to move people down to the academic study hall, then finally out of that study hall, and the student is able to not take electives. Mm -hmm. the, um, the other point I want to make about our skills classes um, is that these skills classes are all um, part of the student's day. Um, it's built right into their schedule. Um, they are not pulled out from classes, so they're not um, ostracized from their peers, which is really important for their own self-worth um, and confidence. These, um, these classes are in their day, and when um, the, the classes change, they just go to their classes. It's really seamless. Yeah. 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 Is it within their teams? The field classes? Yeah. We try and schedule um, those small groups um, to be okay. team yeah. tour. Sometimes okay. um, it's not always possible, depending <coughs> on so many other factors in the student's schedule. Yeah. We certainly start there. We work on straight things more and I work very the schedule. schedule those, yeah. Good. Thank you. certain standalone classes much for the students with different And class sizes tend to be between five to seven, mm -hmm. sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more. but to really provide that specialized instruction um, to the best of our ability and, and for the students' benefit to keep those classes really small. And then um, <coughs> on the program, I mentioned earlier that we have a number of, of these um, offerings um, based on student needs. So um, just a little background. The National Reading Channel, reading is my, reading is my passion, so I'm going to be a reading piece right like now. Um, in 2000, um, the National Reading Channel decided and founded that um, in order for, for students to become good readers, um, it was really important and essential that they all be, um, that, that students be taught reading um, in five areas. They call them in five, that um, uh, phonemic awareness, um, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. So our um, reading program at Clark Lane is a structured, um, structured literacy approach to reading, where in that we address all those areas um, and we need students where they're at. Um, reading doesn't come naturally. Um, speaking, oral language comes naturally. All of us with the brain does not um, it's not wired to read naturally, so um, we have students have to be taught directly and systematically how to read. So our on, on the far end of, of our reading um, class is, is a basic reading class. And these are students, for students who really need um, uh, support in um, reading intervention that focuses on reading fluency, 
um, vocabulary development, and reading comprehension skills. It's very scaffold, and we use a lot of rich text, um, connected text, um, to build those reading strategies, um, focusing on the basic um, reading skills, um, from main idea all the way to um, vocabulary, annotating, summary, and so forth. Um, the middle of the road um, uh, approach to a um, reading intervention is what we call a structured reading just words um, uh, classes, and those classes are designed for students who have mild to moderate reading difficulties. Um, these students need a world word level approach of uh, um, slightly more structured and um, explicit uh, methodology for learning to read. Um, it's, um, it's a small group. It's designed for students who are in grades 4 to 12. Um, it can be used as a tier, um, tier 2, tier 3, and special education for students. Um, on the far end is our Wilson or the Wilson um, approach to reading intervention. And um, this is um, a uh, reading approach designed for students with fairly severe reading difficulties, um, such as dyslexia. Um, this is a very highly structured, highly systematic, and explicit approach to reading. Um, and um, it, um, it focuses on the big five, the um, meaning of awareness, word, word structure, and phonics, and people pattern comprehension. Um, and it's for students in grades 2 through 12, um, even so. Um, but um, it's been um, proven to be extremely successful um, uh, nationally here in Waterford. Um, so um, I'm very excited about um, the results of that. I want to um, also just say that this, um, this model has been possible um, because of our highly trained and highly qualified staff here in Waterford and practical um, support um, and understanding that um, you know, students have the right to learn uh, to their best, their best potential, um, and all students, it's never too late to learn to read. So as I was saying earlier, in the 90s, um, it was a very straightforward, maybe shoebox approach mm -hmm. to special education support, mm -hmm. but I would say that now we really employing five or more approaches. One is differentiating instruction in the classroom where the general education teacher really gets to know the students, their needs, their IEP, which is their individual education plan, their their challenges, and then therefore differentiates, accommodate the design classroom plan. That could also be in the emotional realm. The teacher might have to learn strategies to support a student with a lot of anxiety or or any number of things. Um, a cross business top class is what we said earlier, is having two um, certified teachers, both general ed and specialists in the classroom who are familiar with the student and So I was, I was in that role as a teacher in the general ed class in the history in the high school level. And it was very challenging. I think the one very challenging thing was the two adults getting together and really learning the collaborative piece, which is um, the adult um, seeing that in the skills-based classes where we really try to teach kids skills. Um, but one of those other skills that Stu mentioned was organizational skills. So often we come across with students who are pretty strong in reading, writing, math, but they are a natural organization. So that is something that skills-based classes can help them with as well. And that is a real student. There are real students who, you look at their um, notebook or their backpack and it's incredible. And they seek some assistance on the daily or every other day, organizing themselves. And if you do that for a number of years and, and really you know, stress the use of an agenda, the use of a teacher page, you really can train students to um, the law and, and prepare Related service integration are things like in um, Caitlin's program, they have every other day, you know, daily. Daily counseling is a school psychologist and school social worker for a half hour. Um, we also have in our export in these four programs, CC, OG, CC language. Hmm. So our, our, quite often our way of um, special skills uh, are right into the classroom. Um, much like a, a co-op without a lot of planning and teaching, but they are integrated by um, They're just part of the community. Great. 
fiction to non-fiction to um, FAQ stuff. Um, it's all on there, and so on, so you can use their personal devices, phone books, any of our devices to listen. Um, it's, it's a great way to allow those students to have, um, who have print disabilities to access um, uh, appropriate content, build their vocabulary, build a love of literature as well. Um, so I think, and then I, as I mentioned, in terms of applying all of our, all of those um, tools to, to their classroom, to their, um, to their uh, responsibilities, and to the reading, writing, education, um, and communicating with the students. We've come a long way. So, um, another aspect of struggling with that, I mentioned earlier, is like in the five program team, so we to explain that in a moment, but. What it really does is it just builds a beautiful relationship between general ed students and special ed students, and it um, destigmatizes all of those things, and everyone feels much more comfortable around themselves. Yep. So, Unified Sports, their motto is um, they promote social inclusion through sport, so you pair your typical peers with your students with disabilities. Uh, this model was first introduced at Berkeley in 2012 with the basketball team. Since then, it has expanded exponentially. This year, we participated in a bowling tournament with 20 other schools. We held a cornhole tournament in the fall, which was <laughs> phenomenal. Um, both, I think, for the adults participating and the students, it was a lot of fun. Um, some of our after-school programs, Unified Fun Club, which is run by one of our paraprofessionals, Phil Long, that started with 15 students and now has over 40. So that right there, I think, just shows, you know, how involved our students are. Um, as Jim mentioned earlier, we have expanded our electives. So what uh, some teachers did is we took this model of Unified and put it into the classroom. So seventh grade teacher, Molly Keeley, teaches science explorers. So students in there learn about life cycles of different animals, insects. We have culinary explorers and community explorers, which is taught by myself and uh, special ed teacher Pat Lloyd. Culinary explorers, we taught the students how to cook, they had to create recipes, they learned about kitchen safety. Community explorers was probably, I think, one of our most fun classes that we had. We paired with a lot of places in the community. Our regular ed students had to um, sign a field trip, and we went to the police station. Fire station, we went to Philomena where the students were put to work and had to learn how to wash dishes and set up a restaurant for a banquet. Um, we visited Cotton right. Shop where they shop. We went to Supreme, they practiced ordering and practiced uh, being in a restaurant. And then we also have Unified PE, which allows our students to access the PE cur curriculum in a way that may not be possible in a large classroom setting. Um, Earlier this fall, casting and film are a unified program. We were one of four schools chosen in the state um, for our success with unified, and we were very impressed with all the things that we were doing, so hopefully we'll have that video sometime soon. <laughs> um, another thing that I think is important to mention when we think about our students, we have um, five eighth grade students who are on the goal team, and one of the requirements for being on the team is completing something called the Genius Hour Project, which is a uh, project that they have to design themselves, and all of those students have chosen um, to somehow involve themselves with our unified program. We have one student who created an awesome video that showcases all that we do, and then the other students are putting on a unified field day for our students and for some of the students at the elementary school. Huh.
was inspirational to you. Uh, so finally, we have some quotes from students. And the students were fine with us using the names. The parents were okay with it. I'll give you a second to read them. We have the unified quotes. you with another brief strategic plan update. You've heard me uh, talk about over the last couple of months at board meetings uh, an exercise we went through as a district analysis and action team called Initiative Mapping. Gonna, we have copies in front of you, uh, but we briefly wanted to touch on some of the highlights and I'll ask Mr. Powers to do that tonight. Thank you. So, uh, this is Five meeting schedule, full day, 
born out of the previous climate. Uh, it was to improve our teaching practice, uh, look at our assessments to see how uh, we can uh, enhance our curriculum and certainly have a place and a structure to monitor uh, the success that we have and to build upon those as a district. And then finally, to, to replicate sort of a data team at the school level. So uh, we had uh, we have 20 members on the committee, this is an administrator. Um, on February, we did an initiative mapping. So that's really uh, where we identified the most important uh, areas we're focusing on. Uh, this was facilitated by uh, the co-founder of the Science of Secondary School Redesign. And uh, part of that structure of, of it is to define what's an initiative. That's something that's usually the first two years of uh, something new in the district. What's a program? The program is something that has on has done some research, done some piloting, been implemented, and usually something that's been with us for about three to five years. And of course, whatever we do, we want to make sure it's how you So we developed those kind of um, And with that, we brainstormed uh, the 20 of us uh, all the different either initiatives or programs we currently have. We have 46 unique uh, initiatives and programs in the district. So I'm going to go through. We group them in eight groups. Um, you will see in red next to them E, M, H, or D. That would be elementary, middle, high school, or district. <laughs> that would be uh, kind of uh, you know, And you can see that under assessment, what we have, pedagogical changes, what we have, academics, building capacity, college and career readiness. All these 46 initiatives and programs, the takeaways were that uh, our group of teachers and administrators uh, felt that we weren't over bold, uh, that there was a deliberate alignment with the board and strategic goals, that the initiative initiatives were high yield, sustainable, affordable, and measurable. And that uh, we should be presenting these takeaway to faculty meetings, and this is underway currently with our five buildings. So, it's just a brief overview of some of the work that we're doing within the strategic plan. Thank you, Craig. Comments, questions from the board? Thank you very much. Well, the uh, updates for the board uh, we're launching our school safety forums next week. Uh, Back in February, late February, uh, early March, uh, the chief and I, uh, Chief of Police uh, Mahoney and I, issued a joint statement on school safety to the Waterford community. What grew out of that was a commitment to provide our parents with the most up-to-date information around school safety. So we are launching uh, five school safety forums this uh, spring, one at each school. Great Neck kicks us off next Tuesday, May 1st. Um, and really we're going to share with our parent and uh, Waterford community what are those proactive measures uh, we're doing, and when I say we, a police department in a school district. Uh, so what are those proactive things we're doing? We're also going to share um, what would happen in the case of a real emergency. Uh, what would be the police response? What would be the school district's response? Uh, where would you pick up your child, for example? Uh, those, those sorts of issues. And then the last piece of the presentation will be how parents can help us uh, because it really is a uh, community concern, mm -hmm. keeping all of our kids safe. And there are definitely things that our parents do to help us, and we want to make sure uh, they know what those things are. So we'll be launching those uh, next week, and those have been publicized in, in the community. Uh, another endeavor, I'm going to ask Mr. Hauser in just a second to uh, report on our progress as we approach our first STEAM night at Waterford High School. It's really an opportunity for us to highlight our students' work in the areas of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. 
And again, it's part of our continued work around marketing our efforts to the broader Waterford community. I'm going to provide a brief update on where we're at. Uh, basically, we'll be hosting our first meeting tonight on May 16th. It'll be at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be right next to the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the Waterford Community Center. We'll be having a meeting with the
recommendations included uh, continued efforts to communicate between departments, i.e. guidance, CTE, parents, and colleges, uh, explore Department of Labor apprenticeship programs, and uh, recommending uh, the consideration of including CTE and graduation requirements, which would ultimately be a board uh, decision along the lines of policy. Uh, so congrats to the high school on a successful visit. And just one a more reminder, we will be presenting the Board of Ed budget to the RTM next Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, no, two Thursdays, May 10th, 2018 at 7 p.m. If there are no questions, that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Tom. Uh, committee and other reports, uh, finance, no. Uh, we had a very productive uh, meeting uh, Tuesday, um, and thanks to our our central office team, we've, uh, as Tom's mentioned, we have some nice uh, favorable savings that allow us to um, address some of the needs in the um, in the district. Um, uh, middle school gas conversion that Tom mentioned, that's going to cost um, $77,000 to make sure the um, a furnace is compatible um, in the switchover. Um, uh, again, we have to do the oil tank removal. Um, so that's going to be $19,181. Um, and then the bus lot trailer, as we close one site and move to another, we're going to need to rent a uh, trailer for the duration that the, that move takes place. And that's uh, 16955 So um, those will, will be able to, um, I think, do that in this year's budget. Um, and uh, quite a, a big um, chunk will... Uh, be saved for our um, HVAC work because we're having trouble cooling the building on high humidity days and so um, we're going to look at um, a, a solution that should run somewhere around $98,000. Thank you, Ben. That's, that's for the high school building we're talking about. Uh, any questions from the board? Other committee reports. Uh, Jody, youth services. I just really short. Um, this isn't how it's going on. The dancing with the stars was a huge success. I think. Uh, I think the families that went really had a great time. Uh, Waterford won again this year, and then uh, Mark Higgins, uh, Audrey Montanero, and Kelly Barnes. They were the overall winners, and they did. Everybody did a phenomenal job, and it's really great how both communities came together and. Uh, the after school program has started over at um, YSC and uh, Red Cross is no longer there. So uh, Youth with Zero is able to take over upstairs all sorts of us that will give them a lot more room and maybe you know be able to run more programs and uh, just, just be a nicer atmosphere. I think, and plus they won't have to pay for the Red Cross for electricity and heating. Um, uh, also, uh, Camp Dash, they, they're already half full, uh, and that should be a, that should be a really interesting um, endeavor this year. They're going to be over at Clark Lane, and it's gonna, I think it's going to work out very well, though, too, because um, this is going to have the uh, Summer Academy there, too, so the students that are going to Summer Academy can take part again in Camp Dash, and, we, and they won't have to be bussed over, they'll be right there in the middle of the week. They had a lot of great games. Um, I was concerned because they didn't have playground equipment there, so they little ones. But they have some games planned, and I think that everybody's going to have a really good time. They have some great topics that um, each week, and, I think, uh, it's, and it's so affordable. I'm happy for the parents, but it's, it's an affordable thing. And you don't have to go the whole eight weeks. And we did have to move the back a week, though, because we're going to have school yeah. earlier than usual. So. Why the site move? I know we talked about this, but I forget. Why did we move to Clark Lane? Are we doing work on our elementary? Uh, a variety of reasons. Uh, you know, we've been running Summer Academy at Oswegatchie, Camp yeah. Dash at Great Neck. We're really tying up two schools right. until the very end of the summer for, for cleaning for purposes. Cleaning, yeah. um, with that said, uh, Clark Lane does offer, uh, you know, the access to the fields and the gymnasium right in that front part of the building uh, or the back depending on how you look at the building. Um, so there are some advantages. Uh, Mr. Mancini and Mr. Powers have walked the building with YSB. Is it air conditioned? They're excited. Yeah. There's two gyms. Right, there's two gyms, right. Yeah. They could do more. True. 
afford them the larger spaces uh, plus the classroom breakout mm -hmm. to really effectively accommodate the uh, children of water grade. And another nice part of it too is eighth graders going into ninth grade, they can get community service hours uh, volunteering their time as uh, junior counselors. So, uh, I think it's, it's a good program. Thank you, Jody. Uh, other committee reports? I have the uh, Waterford Education Fund, their annual fundraiser is Friday, May 18th at 6 p.m. at Langley's Restaurant. It is their big annual fundraiser, so this is their big push to, to get people to attend. And it is in honor of Millie, the spelling bee lady. Does everybody know Millie in town? I don't know. But um, there is some woman that has done all these spelling bees here in Waterford, and they're honoring her, and they have hundreds of people going already. So if anyone is interested, you can contact me. Uh, Carolyn also has their flyer, and you can put you in contact with the organizers. Thank you, Joyce. Any other committee reports? I went to the LEARN uh, Board of Ed meeting representing Waterford to have progress on the school in New London at Bethel and uh, business as usual, I suppose. It's always interesting. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. If there are no other reports, we will move on to new business. The first item on the agenda is action on the Asagachi principal position. Could I have a motion, please? Jody. I'm so happy to make this motion. That the Water Board of Education approves the Asagachi principal position for the school year 2018. Second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this nomination and this motion didn't come out of the blue. Uh, it's been a long process. Uh, a very thorough vetting process. Tom, would you give the uh, overlay? Please? Sure, sure. Let me talk a little bit about the process. We actually started on February 9th posting the position. So you can see the length of time that it takes uh, to, to hire for these positions. Uh, it's, it's been a rigorous process, uh, including four rounds of interviews and a performance task. Um, we had 66 applicants for the position. Uh, all 66 applications were screened. Um, we interviewed 15 candidates in the first round. That was whittled down to about uh, 11 candidates. Uh, four candidates were forwarded on to the administrative team of the district, and one candidate was forwarded on to the Board of Education uh, for their consideration. Uh, in terms of stakeholder involvement in the process, we conducted a parent and community survey on what the skills traits and attributes we were looking for in a new principal. It was a staff survey. Um, it was a school-based committee form, which included Oscarachi teachers, some of whom are here tonight. The other ones are at the Reading Olympics, another big event tonight <laughs> at Oscarachi. But uh, Oscarachi teacher uh, involvement, we had parent representation, certainly central office was involved. Uh, we had board member representation with board member Ben Venuti. And then the uh, round just before the board round was the entire administrative team of the district. So when you look from the beginning to end, you're looking at 25 to 30 people having input uh, in this process. Um, I'd like to say a few words about the candidate before final action by the board. Uh, as uh, board member Nazarchek mentioned, Joseph McGreeno will bring a multitude of professional experience to us here in Waterford. Uh, many of you may have had the opportunity to work uh, with Joseph during his uh, successful teaching tenure here in Waterford. He holds a sixth year in educational leadership from Southern Connecticut State University, a master's degree in elementary education from the University of New Haven, a bachelor's degree in communication and media studies from Fordham University, and is currently a leadership fellow in the UConn slash Office of Early Childhood Pre-K uh, to 3 uh, program. Uh, Mr. Macrino currently serves as the assistant principal of the Lewin G. Joel Jr. Elementary School in Clinton, Connecticut, a school of approximately 550 students. He has served successfully in this role for four years. 
Prior to this role, he served successfully in the Waterford Public Schools as a teaching assistant principal, an elementary classroom teacher in grades three and four, a curriculum leader, and a summer school director. Highlights from his most recent position as assistant principal include being named the 2018 Connecticut Assistant Principal of the Year, a uh, position uh, he currently holds. He's elevated the culture and climate of the school through an approach that includes shared leadership, shared decision making, and a focus on teamwork. His efforts at Joel's school under his leadership include second step, responsive classroom, and restorative practices. In addition, his work there is focused on enhancing the workshop model in reading, writing, and mathematics, as well as extensive experience in SRBI, PPT, and 504 processes. We're fortunate to have found such a qualified candidate. I did speak to a number of people in the Clinton Public Schools, including his superintendent, assistant superintendent, director of special services, his principal, as well as staff in the building. And I'd like to share just a couple of highlights if he's not embarrassed enough yet. So um, his superintendent said his work ethic, character, and passion for education are unparalleled. He's a consummate professional, building strong relationships, and is liked and respected by those he works with. He has a strong willingness to listen to people and displays an extraordinary openness as a leader. He has a strong knowledge of effective teaching and learning and a firm grasp on the elements of early childhood learning. He leads with, we are stronger if we work together. His assistant superintendent added he has a strong conviction to do what is best for children. He brings up viewpoints others may not have thought of and is very perceptive. His director of special services mentioned that he has a kind and calm approach. He stresses the importance of the fidelity of high quality teaching practices. Through his work, he validates teachers' opinions and supports them. His principal added, he conducts himself with great integrity and professionalism. He has great relationships with students, staff, and parents. He's not afraid to try new approaches. He's accomplished much in his time here. He has focused on school climate, implemented responsive classroom, town hall meetings within the school, developed overarching goals by grade level as well as vertically across grades. He works well with our instructional coaches, effective data team meetings, workshop model implementation, as well as uh, his tireless work with teachers on effective teaching. She added, in all my years of being a principal with several assistant principals, he is the first and only assistant principal I ever nominated for the Connecticut Assistant Principal of the Year Award. He won that award, and deservingly so. Staff mentioned relatable and approachable. He listens. He is great with some of our most challenging students. He is collaborative. He gets people thinking. The best way to describe him as he does right by kids. And I want to mention your own kids' behavior tonight has been outstanding. <laughs> Given a lengthy board meeting, but uh, I'm confident that we have found uh, the right person through uh, you know all different levels of this process. And uh, assuming the board votes affirmatively, uh, we look forward to welcoming him to this team. Back to the chair. Well, the board certainly concurs with, with that assessment. Uh, would any members of the board care to share any comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to appoint Joseph McCrino as the principal of Wasagachi say aye. 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 Any opposed? You are appointed unanimously. Congratulations. <laughs> Joe, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Um, forgive me for reading or referring to my notes, but I don't want to get lost in the moment. Um, I'm trying to contain my excitement, but it's an honor to be appointed as the next principal of Oswegashi School. As a work high school graduate and former teacher at both Southwest and Quaker Hill, this will be my opportunity to give back to the school system and community that provided me with so many positive experiences. It feels like I'm coming home. Thank you to all of uh, everybody that was involved in the process. Um, all the support of my family. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. Okay, we're going to take a brief recess. We'll reconvene at 7.05 so that we may personally extend our congratulations to you and your family.
Right. Okay, if I can have your attention, we'll yeah, reconvene the uh, meeting and proceed with our new business agenda. Item B, review of possible action rate, non renewal of long term substitute teachers. We, we've done this before, it's just an obligation under our statutes. It's not for cause. Uh, could I have a motion? Can't really shut the would door. Would you like to um, yes. make a motion? Um, I would like to move that the Waterford Board of Education moves that the contract of, of employment of Mary Alicia not be renewed for the following year upon its expiration at the end of the 2017-18 school year, and that the superintendent of schools is directed to advise such person in writing of this action. Is there a second? Second. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item C, graduation date for the high school. Proposal as set forth is for uh, June 21st. Can I have a motion to that effect? Jody? So moved. Yes. Okay. Can Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Board of Education sets the graduation date for the Waterford High School class of 2018 as June 21st, 2018. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Say aye. Discussion? Sure. Uh, just, to, just to clarify, that um, how many days would that give us for class? 181. And what's our normal calendar? At? 181. Oh, okay. Yes. We're okay. not shortening the school year okay. by any days. Just checking. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was at 185. Yeah, I thought it was too. Teacher days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Second meeting of uh, policy. 6000, mm -hmm. policy 6153 relating to field trips. This is second time for the board, second meeting, so it can be approved if that's the wish of the board. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
of the uh, form number one, um, and you're adding the total cost to the sales department fund. And those are the recommendations that we have. Right. Does the board have any questions, concerns, comments? If not, we're ready for a motion then to approve it. Someone here to make that motion. I'd like to move that we approve policy uh the board of education teams and adopt policy six one five three. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. We are now at the adjournment stage. Jody. Great. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned unanimously. Thank you. There's a lot of work on the field trip stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a lot of watching out. Yeah. <laughs> to get where it works. Which is a good thing. Yeah. And the fundraising. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Anybody tell me this.